How's it going, you guys? It's Pep Platypus here, and I'm going to finally get back to doing my Hunter x Hunter episode reviews. I'm going to be doing one episode at a time, and uh, now we're going to do episode four. So if you haven't seen my first at one through three review, you can check that out. I'll put an annotation on the screen. It's not a great review. I kind of drag, and I don't have my better camera at the time. But if you want to just watch all my reviews or whatever, you know, you can go back and watch that one where I cover the first three episodes. Uh, so this is my review for episode four. Uh, I forget the title of the episode, but it doesn't really matter. Um, essentially, this episode is running, so... <laughs> um, pretty much, I'm just going to summarize the episode and review it at the same time. So, the beginning of the episode, it picks up where the last episode left off. They're running. This is not really an endurance race, but really just a follow-the-leader type thing. You go after the head examiner dude, stay behind him, run, make it to the end, that's all you gotta do. If you get exhausted and drop out, well, you failed. And speaking of that, we have the computer little hacker dude who's all thinks he's all smart shit with his little bow tie. Um, yeah, he gets fucking... he doesn't even get bitched by anybody, he literally just drops out because he's a bitch. I mean, that's pretty much what happens. Uh, essentially, he, he's all cocky and shit, he thinks this is going to be like a 40 meter or 40 kilometer run because uh, previous history of these exams show that it's a 40 kilometer run. But no, it's actually like 80 or something like that, and he pretty much drops out because these other three dudes without like the makeup right here, those three go back and they just start haggling him and talking shit to him and he just collapses under the pressure. And, yeah, he was too cocky, so that's what happens when you're too cocky, I guess. And it turns out that that one dude who was trying to drop out rookies back in the day, the dude who offered, like, the soda with the laxative and shit, that dude, it paid them off to go psych that dude out. Because apparently he just gets off on fucking over rookies. Um, then we get some more important things. Gon and Killawar are properly introduced to each other. The, you know, little white-haired kid and uh, Gon, our main character. And they're definitely very different. They're the same age, but, you know, while Gon is very happy-go-lucky, you know, a little, he's, you know, a little naive, but he's not totally stupid. Killa was much more calm, collected, and mature, but still a kid. And there's a really cool scene where Leorio almost drops out, but Gon stops, he looks back at him. Killa was like, let's go. Gon's like, no, no, I'm gonna wait. He doesn't actually say that, but he just stands there. He waits for Leorio to come. Now, I took that as kind of like a, no words need to be said, I know you can do this, so let's go. And that's pretty much what happens. And, yeah, that's pretty much it there. And, you know, he grabs Leorio's uh, briefcase with his fishing pole, and Killua thinks that's really cool. He's like, hey, let me try that thing out sometime. And then Gon's like, oh, if I can try out your skateboard. So they are kids, you know. Uh, Killua was not this overly emo, like, adult-type kid. He still is kind of a kid. He's just more mature and cold and, you know, cool and collected than Gon is. But, uh, we see Leorio, now that he's further along, he's taken off some clothes so that he can kind of move quicker, which is smart. And he meets up with Kurapika, and they kind of have a talk. They talk about their motives for becoming hunters again, but instead of arguing about it, they actually kind of give more insight into their characters. Kurapika starts off by talking about how it's the red scarlet eyes of his clan were what the Phantom Troop apparently wanted, and they killed them all and s just stole the eyeballs off their corpses, which is very dark and uh, very uh, gruesome. And I think that's, it, it's cool because a lot of times you say, oh, a bunch of people got killed. That's bad, you know, that's always dark storytelling, but to also add on top of that that their bodies, had, you know, the eyes were removed and shit, that, you know, that adds to it, definitely gives... Uh, Kurapika a lot of, you know, good motivation for this vengeance that he wants, and he basically explains that, you know, the eyes are valuable, that's what the Phantom Troop wanted, and that I'll be able to get on, like, Blacklist, and blah blah blah, and Leorio's like, well, that means you have to throw away your pride, because you want to be an honorable hunter, and he's like, well, yeah, that's fine for my revenge, or whatever, that's, you know, Leorio then, he doesn't really want to explain, he's still kind of saying you know, oh, I want money, but then he lets it slip that his friend died, and there's, like, this disease when he was a kid. His friend died, he wanted to become a doctor and not charge people any money, but he says it was a joke of the, the world rules on money. You can buy people and cars and all this stuff with money, and that's basically uh, his attitude. You know, money rules the world, so I'm going to have a bunch of money. It's not really from a place of greed. It's a place of survival, you could say. 
And uh, I think that definitely gives the character more likability than he originally had, because originally it was like, oh, I want money, greedy. I mean, you figure there's probably more to it than that. Now we actually see there is more to it than that. So, again, the characterization and character development for the four main characters, um, very good in this episode, very strong. Uh, outside of that, uh, like I said, the computer dude bails out, a bunch of other people bail out because they start climbing stairs, and once they hit the stairs, the examiner starts moving faster, so it just goes to show that this dude has a ridiculous level of stamina. And he has no mouth, which is kind of weird, but you know, it's anime, that shit kind of shit happens sometimes with weird character designs. Anyway, they do end up getting out of the tunnel, but they aren't done running, but they do get to take a break. And they find out about a place called the Swindler's Swamp. Oh, before I get to that, Gon and Killua are the first people to cross the line. They decide to race each other. They both cross the line without even breaking a sweat. They're not even slightly exhausted at all, unlike everyone else who's completely exhausted. So that's definitely uh, interesting to keep of note that these two have ridiculous stamina for children. I mean, you know, people say kids never run out of energy. Apparently it's fucking true in Hunter x Hunter because these dudes are good to go. But anyway, like I was saying, the examiner was introducing the Swindler's Swamp, which is the next place they're going to run through. And apparently the animals and wildlife there will try to deceive and trick you in order to capture you and eat you. It's an ecosystem. And this guy comes around the corner and he's like, hey, that's not the examiner. That's some kind of man-faced ape. I'm the real examiner. So Hisoka, the card-playing dude who turned that dude's arms into flowers and shit, yeah, he just, he's like, oh, let me just throw some cards like knives and he pretty much throws them at the guy who says he's the examiner and the guy who we thought was the examiner. The guy we thought was the examiner with no mouth catches the cards, the other dude gets hit, and he says, you know, um, if our examiner is a hunter, which he has to be, he would be able to block an attack of that level. The guy we're with is the examiner, and he's like, yeah, you're right, that's good. If you ever do that again, you're out of this fucking competition, I'll tell you that. Um, yeah, so, Hisoka, cool character, very weird design, and very odd, f effeminate personality, but we'll see where he goes. He's, he's looking to be the antagonist of this arc. Um, still, though, he has skill. And, yeah, it turns out the guy who claimed to be the examiner was actually just a man-faced ape trying to trick people. So it's like, you can never let your guard down, even in a situation like that. And I also like that that keeps happening, where... They'll give it to you one way, and then it turns out to be different. Like, we've had that several times now in these episodes where they have a task, they think it's one way, and it turns out to be another way. And as a viewer, that gets you more involved in the story. Because when a story is told straight out, you can still be invested and involved. But when it throws curveballs at you, and you know that there might be something amiss, you actually think, like, huh, is this this, or is this that? So I like that it involves you as a viewer more than a straight-up story. Which, like I said, there's nothing wrong with a straight-up story, but it's nice to have that deception in there. Um, so yeah, overall, I'm going to give this episode like an 8 out of 10. I actually thought it was very strong when it came to characterization. Uh, I would go higher, but it didn't really progress that far, and only because like only 36 or 38 or whatever people dropped out of the competition, so we haven't progressed that far, and... Um, the pacing overall was fine. The episode moved at a fine pace. A little slow, because, I mean, all we're doing is running throughout the entire episode. So it's kind of like, eh, what are you going to do? So, yeah, 8 out of 10 for this episode of Hunter x Hunter. Uh, I'll probably record an episode 5 review pretty soon. I mean, this isn't like Adventure Time where I can watch an 11-minute episode, record a review, watch an 11-minute episode, record a review. These are like 22 to 24-minute episodes. So, we'll see. Um, yeah, but overall, that's pretty much all I wanted to say about this, uh, episode of Hunter x Hunter, and, uh, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.